Gossip. Who doesn't love gossip, but who also loves the effect that gossip can have on some families? G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, and welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. It's been a while since I've covered this one, but if you like it, I'd love for you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn of the barbie, and get ready for this wild story. Let's go. Father abandons children and then gets angry that I won't share my sister's pregnancy information. So I, 32 female, have recently begun communicating with my bio father after 14 years of no contact. I've spent years in therapy working on developing healthy boundaries and fiercely protect them. Bio's father recently passed and he reached out to me via messenger. He does not have my phone number. We began speaking, but I was clear from the start that my sister wanted no contact or to be spoken about. I made it clear that my mum, sister and dad, technically step but he raised me and I love him dearly, were off limits. I was also clear that I wasn't looking for him to be my dad and that if he was interested, I was open to being adult acquaintances or possibly friends. Fast forward and my sister is pregnant. I did not tell him as again, it was off limits. That side of the family is very toxic and no one talks directly with each other, but instead, there's this weird telephone game where they all talk about each other. My brother-in-law finally told my grandmother and the telephone chain began. So one night, my phone starts blowing up at 10 p.m. He starts going on about my mum being crazy. He didn't abandon us. The annulment he got was only so he could marry his second wife. He's on number four, by the way. The final text was, what is your sister's new baby's name? I didn't respond and I just let the messages roll in and didn't knee-jerk respond, as he was hoping. That is his way. He flips out and dumps on people emotionally about his victimhood so you give in. Mind you, he cheated on my mother, beat her, beat us, verbally and mentally abused us with mind games and withholding love or screaming until he got his way my entire childhood. He also didn't pay his support most months, and if my mum asked, he'd demand a visit and then abuse us. We'd come back so upset and terrified that it took us weeks to calm down. So I sat there for a while, thinking about what my response would be, and decided to call my sister to let her know that he was now aware of her pregnancy and his request. Her and I both agreed that it wasn't any of his business, so I responded and told him that everything he'd said was a lot to unpack, and that I would at some point, but not at 10pm on a Sunday night as I was getting ready for work. I then advised him that my relationship with my sister is held separate from him and would not be telling him the baby's name. He went radio silent and I've not heard from him since. I know he saw the message. I'm about 90% certain that we're back to no contact is a form of punishment for me. Basically, I wouldn't let him violate my boundaries as he decided that if he couldn't get his way, that I wasn't worth the effort to speak with. I haven't lost anything in my eyes as his absence brings peace. I see now that trying to end a toxic cycle with someone who is still hell-bent on remaining there isn't ready to have a mature relationship. Now in the comments, Don K3232 says, Wow, that's a rough existence with this man, but I'm proud of you for how you handled this. Keep up the good work. And OP replies, I appreciate that, as it hasn't been an easy road, and boundaries have always been a big issue for me. I'm so grateful for my wonderful therapist, Linda. You know, my dad abandoned my family when I was a baby, but he used to take us out whenever my mom wasn't free until he didn't pay child support, which got him arrested for not showing up to court for what I just mentioned. But my family doesn't care anymore because he's dead to me and my family. That's rough, and I'm sorry. Sadly, I completely get it. That is for sure the right route. I wish my mum had, but she didn't. Hopefully the family you have is close and you can all lean on each other. Our next post is by user Jellicky2020, titled, Neighbor kept parking on my property, so I had him towed. Hello everyone. First thing is that this issue just happened this week, and I'm so mad that I'm shaking as I type this. I'm going to apologize up front if I ramble, but honestly, I can't believe this actually happened. 
I've tried to condense this week's activity into a single story, but sadly, it turned out to be super long. Sorry in advance, I think I have to put a TLDR. Backstory. I'm a single mother of two teenage boys, and I live in a nice, quiet neighborhood at the end of a cul-de-sac. Every house on this street has a garage, and I'm the only one that has a single car and parks in my garage. Almost every house on this street is a family home with at least three cars, but most have more. Some will park in their driveway, and some will park on the street. It's never been a problem since everyone is considerate on how they park, and no one has ever had an issue with getting in and out of the street. In addition, I tend to keep to myself. I'm not antisocial, and I wave and say hello to my neighbours when I come and go from my home, but usually when I get home, I stay home. So I say all of this to give you an idea that I'm a homebody, and my neighbours pretty much know that when I get home, I stay home. About six months ago, the house to my right was sold to a larger family that consisted of dad, mum, and three teenagers. The day they started moving in, I made a point to go to the edge of the property to wave and greet them in order to welcome them to the neighbourhood. They were friendly, and I was happy to have such nice people to move in next door. Also note, this family used their garage for storage and thus parked their four cars in their driveway. I didn't know it at the time, but their youngest son was just months away from his 16th birthday. Now that you have a little information, on to the story. The players. Me is me, ND is entitled neighbor dad, NS is entitled neighbor son, NM is entitled neighbor mum, and NP is the poor, nice police officer. Today is Monday afternoon, and this story began last Tuesday. At around 6pm on Tuesday, I received a knock on the door, and it was Neighbor Dad. Following is our conversation. Neighbor Dad. Good evening, how are you? Me, talking through the screen door. We're okay. I'm sorry I can't open the door, but my youngest came home from school with a sore throat today, and so I'm not sure what's going on with him. How are you, and how can I help? Neighbor Dad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it isn't anything serious. Look, we're okay. My son just turned 16 a few weeks ago, and I'm sure you saw the truck that we bought him. Me. Yes, I did. It's such a pretty truck, and big. Does he like it? Neighbor Dad. Yes, he does. It's what he wanted, so we got it for him. It is very big, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Now, let's take a brief pause here, and understand that when I say this truck is very big, it is very big. It is an F-350. I personally think it's too much of a vehicle for a kid learning to drive, but it's not my money, so to each their own. Me. I don't understand. Neighbor Dad. We've been having complaints from some other neighbors that his truck is so big that they can't get around it when they're driving through and we're afraid it might get sideswiped if he continues to park it in the street. I say, yeah, I've had some intense moments trying to get around it myself, but I'm sure he'll get better at parking as he gets more experienced. I'm not sure what this has to do with me. I haven't complained. Neighbor dad. Oh, I know you haven't complained, which is why I was going to ask if he could use your driveway to park since you don't use it. Me, very stunned at this. Um... I do use my driveway when I leave and come home. I can't get to my garage without using my driveway. Besides, I have issues with depth perception, and your son's truck is so big, it'll take up most of my driveway, and I don't want to be responsible for any damage that might happen while it's on my property. Neighbor Dad. Well, we will make sure that he parks so that it allows you to come and go without any issues. Me. Well, that isn't possible. The only way he can park to allow me to get around him is if he parks halfway on my lawn, and that wouldn't work because then he would damage my lawn. If you're concerned about his truck getting damaged, then why don't you let him park in your driveway and then one of your other smaller cars can park in the street? Neighbor Dad, we've already discussed that and we would have to park two cars in the street in order for him to use the driveway. It would be very easy for him to park in your driveway, and I can assure you that it will not be an inconvenience to you. You don't even use your driveway. Me. I'm sorry, but the answer is no. 
I'm not going to be responsible for his vehicle on my property, and I need to be able to come and go without worrying about someone else's property. Neighbor Dad, who is very upset at this point, You're not being very neighborly. I thought you were a nice woman. You don't use your driveway, and this would benefit the whole neighborhood. Me, losing my temper at this point, Listen, I told you no, and I do use my driveway every time I pull into my garage and every time I leave. I'm sorry you don't have enough parking for all your vehicles. I'm sure it's frustrating, but it's not my problem that you decided to buy a vehicle that doesn't fit your property. Now, while I also find it irritating to try to navigate the road with that truck in the way, it is public parking, and so I deal with it. I will not have anyone else's vehicle parking on my property. Now, if you don't mind, I have a sick kid and I need to get back to him. Have a good day. And with that, I closed the door and then looked out the peephole and saw him give me the bird before he turned to leave. I just shook my head and had to take a moment to understand that I actually just had that conversation. I then loaded my son up in the car and left to take him to his minor emergency to get him checked out. All tests came back negative, and I was told he probably had a run-of-the-mill virus and to keep him home and do self-care. I was told to bring him in if it got worse, but not to worry. I went to work the next day and told my co-workers the story of my neighbor's request, and they were shocked. I had one co-worker suggest that I send an email to my HOA to explain what happened just to get it on record because it was such an odd request. I took her advice and typed up an email that day when I was at lunch, and I sent it. For those who want to know, it was just an FYI email, not a complaint email. It basically stated that my neighbor made a request to park on my property, and when I declined, He got mad at me, and I wanted it on record, just in case anything ever happens. Which I'm so very glad I did. So Friday comes, and my youngest son has been home sick since Tuesday afternoon. When I got home Friday evening, I checked him, and he had begun to run a fever, and was complaining of several other things. I had been doing self-care with him since Tuesday, and he didn't appear to be getting any better. Around 7pm, I decided to take him back to minor emergency and loaded him up in the car. I opened my garage door, and I was absolutely shocked to see that very big F-350 sitting in my driveway, blocking me. I can't describe to you how angry I was to see that vehicle sitting there. Now, before anyone starts asking me how I didn't know it was in my driveway, it's because my street is very busy and cars are coming and going all the time, And unless somebody knocks on my door, I don't bother to watch every vehicle that drives up and down the street. The only window that can see my driveway are the ones in my kitchen, and I keep those curtains drawn and never look out of them. So I get out of my car and I stomp over to my neighbor's house and bang on their door. Neighbor mother answers the door, and this is the conversation. Neighbor mother, irritated and kind of angry, Can I help you? You are interrupting our dinner. Me. Your son's parked in my driveway after I told your husband he couldn't. I need to take my son to minor emergency, and that truck is blocking me in. It's at this time that neighbor dad walks up behind neighbor mom and proceeds to talk. Neighbor dad says, He isn't blocking you in. You can get around him. Me. No, I can't. You need to move that truck or I'm going to call the police and a tow truck. I need to get my son in to see a doctor. Neighbor dad, turning to call for his son and then turning back to me. He's not blocking you, but I will have him move it. Me. It doesn't matter whether you believe he's blocking me in or not, he is not allowed to park in my driveway. No one is allowed to park in my driveway, and if I find an unauthorized vehicle parked in my driveway again, I'm not going to bother knocking on your door. I'm going to have it towed. It was at this time I saw the son arrive at the door with his keys in his hands, and I turned to leave and head to my car to wait for him to move it, and I heard him call me that famous B word that every woman has heard at least once in her life. I ignored him and headed to my car, and watched as he got in and, after some effort, finally was able to back out of my driveway and parked his truck in the street a little way down the road. I was able to leave and take my son to minor emergency, where, 
As we waited for several hours to be seen, I shot off another email to my HOA about what had just happened. I want to advise, the HOA had already responded the day before that they received my email, made a note of it, and advised my property was my own, and I could give or deny access to it as I wish. It was this email string that I responded to while waiting for my kid to be seen. Again, all tests administered to my son came back negative, and I was told that it was a run-of-the-mill virus and he would be fine. The virus just had to run its course. So I took him home and called it a day. Saturday evening, my oldest started complaining of a sore throat, and I was starting to feel poorly myself. My youngest appeared to be getting better, so I figured with whatever he had, that we were getting, so we stayed in all day Saturday and Sunday. Sunday evening at about 5.30, my oldest son spiked a fever, and while it came down a little, it didn't come down enough. So I loaded him in the car, and off to minor emergency we went. The only one I could find that was open on Sunday at this time was on the other side of town, so I had to drive 20 minutes just to get there, and we ended up waiting 3 hours to just get in the door, and then another 45 minutes till we saw the doctor. After a few more hours, his tests all come back negative, and the doctor did state that she could hear some wheezing in his lungs, so she prescribed an inhaler for him to help him, but basically told me the same thing, that he has a run-of-the-mill virus and to let it run its course. I had to drive even further to the only 24-hour pharmacy available to pick up the inhaler, and we did not get back to the house until almost midnight. Let me set the scene for you. My son is half asleep in the passenger seat and complaining that he just wants to go home, and I'm exhausted and feeling drained, and having coughing fits myself. And I'm just looking forward to going to bed when I rounded the corner and saw that truck sitting in my driveway. I couldn't even pull in because he was blocking me, and I also noticed that he was parked partially on my lawn. I was so mad I could hardly see straight. I googled and found a 24-hour tow truck service and explained that I had an unauthorized vehicle on my property that I needed towing. The woman said that it would be about 30 minutes before they could get a truck there, and I said that was fine. In the meantime, I walked my kid to the house and put him to bed and then quickly went outside and took a picture from the street to show how much of the driveway he was taking and that he was also parked on my lawn. I couldn't understand why they would park in my driveway again after I'd told them no, and the only thing I could come up with is that there had been no activity at my house for hours, that my neighbor probably assumed I was in for the night, and wouldn't notice the truck in my driveway. This is pure speculation, but it's normal for me to be in for the night, especially after 6pm. I don't know if they missed me leaving, or just saw me leave but figured I was home, but it really doesn't matter because I told them they couldn't park on my property. It was about 12.30am when the tow truck arrived, and I half expected my neighbours to come running, but there wasn't any activity from them, and the driver left with the truck without incident. I went in, shot off another email to my HOA along with pictures and an explanation that I'd towed the vehicle, and then went to bed. At 6am this morning, I woke up to someone banging loudly and rapidly on my door. I didn't have to look, I knew who it was. I grabbed my phone, hit the video record button. Before I opened the door, I looked through the peephole and saw neighbor dad and his son at my door. I opened my door, and following is the conversation. Neighbor dad, very angry and yelling, Where is the truck? Me, as calmly as I could state while coughing, it was towed. You can call such and such company to make arrangements to get it back. Neighbor dad, you didn't have the right to tow it. You're going to pay to get it back. Me, I had every right to tow an unauthorized vehicle on my property. I told you not to park on my property, and you did it anyways. It blocked me from getting in my driveway last night. I told you I was going to have it towed after the last time you parked without my permission, and I won't be paying anything to get it back. Neighbor Dad, you stole my truck, you F and B, and I'm calling the police. I'm gonna sue you. Me, having enough of this, go ahead. In the meantime, I am sick and I'm going back to bed. I closed the door and stood there for a moment. 
I looked out the peephole, and they were still there. Neighbor Dad started banging and also ringing my doorbell nonstop. He knocked and rang my doorbell for another four minutes before he gave up. I am still recording all of this, and I didn't turn off the video until he was gone. I turned and saw my kids standing there. The noise had gotten them up, and I just advised that if they were still feeling ill, to just go back to bed because that was where I was going. Now, I will honestly say that I didn't think he would call the police, but he did. It was about a half hour. I really wasn't looking at the clock that I heard the doorbell ring. I got up and looked through the peephole, and I saw the police officer was there. I opened the door and had the following conversation. Nice police officer says, Good morning, ma'am. Sorry to bother you, but we have a report from your neighbor. He's stating that you stole his son's truck by having it towed from the street, and we need to talk to you about this issue. Me. Good morning, officer. My neighbor is only telling you half the story. I had his truck towed from my driveway when I returned home from minor emergency. I couldn't get into my driveway, and I've already told him twice that him and his family can't park on my property. The issue started last week, and I have emails to my HOA, pictures of his truck parked in my driveway this morning, and a video of my neighbor's visit this morning where he called me names and told me he was going to sue and call the police. I can show you if you'd like. And a nice police officer says yes. So are you saying that the truck in question was on your property without your permission and that you had it towed? Me? Yes. Last Tuesday, he asked if I would allow his son to park in my driveway. I told him no, and he got mad at me and flipped me off before leaving. Then Friday evening, when I was leaving, I discovered his son had parked in my driveway, and I couldn't leave my garage. I went over and demanded that they remove the vehicle, and I told them at that time that I would have the truck towed if they parked on my property again. So I came home late this morning and the truck was in my driveway, so I had it towed. Nice police officer says, I just want to confirm. Are you saying that it wasn't parked on the street, but in your driveway, and you have proof of this? Me. Yes, sir. If you'll give me a minute, I'll print off the emails that I sent to the HOA that documents the issues, and I will also show you the picture and video as well. With this, the police officer said that he would wait for me to print everything off. Once I got the emails printed, I then returned to the door. I opened my photos app to the officer to show the truck in my driveway, which were timestamped. I handed my phone and printed emails to him. After looking at the photos, where you could clearly see my house in the background, the truck blocking the entrance, and that it was partially on the lawn, the officer then read the printouts. He handed my phone back to me, and asked me to open the video that I'd referenced while he went over to the lawn to look. I watched him look at the area, and then take a few photos. I could see my neighbor and his whole family standing in their driveway watching me and the nice police officer. The nice police officer returned, and I handed him back my phone with the video ready, and he watched it. After he finished watching the video, we had the following exchange. Nice police officer. I'm gonna need a copy of that photo and video for my file. If I provide you with an email, would you be able to send it to me? Me. Yes, sir. No problem. Nice police officer. I have enough information for my files to determine that the vehicle was not on public property and was in fact on your property. I've made a note that you did not give permission for the vehicle to be parked on the property. Based on the emails that you gave me with dates and time, it appears you did in fact advise your neighbor not to park on your property. Would you like to file a trespassing report for this incident? Me. Oh, absolutely. Nice police officer. I can see you're not feeling well. You can either file with me now or you can go online. Getting business card out, writing on it, and then handing it to me. Here's my business card with my email address that you need to use to send me your photo and video, and the case number is on the card as well. Do you want to file with me now? Me? Honestly, I'm exhausted, and would prefer to file online later. Nice police officer. Okay, reference this case number when you email your evidence and file the online report. Also reference my name in the report, and one more thing. I saw the video where ND stated that he was going to sue you for having the truck towed. He can sue you if he wants, and I would advise that you keep all of the evidence you provided me with today, along with the case number that I just gave you. 
give it a few days and you can request a copy of the report and you'll want to keep that as well. If you decide to file an online report, you'll need to keep a copy of that as well. I'm gonna go and talk to neighbor dad now and I'm sorry to have bothered you. Me. Thank you, officer. I'm sorry you had to come out. Nice police officer. Have a good day, ma'am. Get some rest. And with that, I closed the door and went back to bed. However, I'm so mad that I didn't get any sleep. A few hours ago, I sent off my photo, video, and another copy of the HOA emails to the email address the police officer gave me, and then saved all of that information just in case. I also filed a trespassing report online. I then sat down and started typing this story. I'm not sure where this is going to go, but I'm going to go see it through. I know that I'm going to get a lot of pushback from people saying that I should have just knocked on their door and had them move the truck, but I feel that I was right to have the truck towed. I had already told them twice not to park on my property, and it didn't stop. So this was the consequence. I will post an update later if there's anything that comes of my report, or if ND does actually follow up on his threat and sued me. If you read all of this, thank you again, and I'm sorry for the length. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.